Okay, so in this problem we're told a 15 centimeter diameter aluminum ball is to be heated from 80 degrees Celsius to an average temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. Taking the average density and specific heat of aluminum in this temperature range to be rho equals 2700 kilograms per meter cubed and Cp equals 0.9 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, respectively, determine the amount of energy that needs to be transferred to the aluminum ball. So the first thing I always like to do is draw what's going on. So essentially we have this aluminum ball. Uh, we're given the diameter of it is 15 centimeters. And we're also given a bunch of other information. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we know we're going to be heating from a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius to 200. So I'm going to write it as T1 and T2, basically just your initial and final temperature. So we've got that down. We know that the average density and specific heat, so we're given these values for rho is this right here. So let's go ahead and write that out. 2,700 kilogram per meter cubed. And we're given the specific heat is 0.9 kilojoules per kilogram K. Um, yeah. And so what we're trying to find is energy. So they basically telling us how much energy is it going to take to be able to heat this up. So the there's one formula you basically need to know for this is that the amount of energy it's going to take is equal to mc delta t. So if we know the mass of the thing that we're going to be heating up, we know its specific heat and we know what the change in temperature is going to be, that's going to tell us how much energy it's going to require right, to be able to basically raise it that temperature. So if we rewrite this like this, uh, the change in temperature is just the same thing as uh, T2 minus T1, right, final minus initial. So we're given both of those. We know the specific heat it's given to us. And then the only thing we're missing right now is the mass. So what is the mass of our little ball here? So the way we're going to do that is by um, by using this rho value, so our density. So rho or density, I'm going to start denoting it with d. We define density as equal to mass over volume. So if you look here, if we can go ahead and solve for the volume, since we know the density, the only variable remaining is m. So uh, if we can solve for m, then we'll plug it back in here and be able to solve for our energy. So that's going to be our path we got to follow. So let's go ahead and do it. So first thing I want to do is solve for V. So you need to know that the volume of a sphere is equal to pi over 6 d cubed. Um, and then we're also given the diameter. Uh, so it's just a matter of plugging it in. They give us the diameter though in centimeters. I'm going to convert it to meters since we have meters uh, in our density. So yeah let's go ahead and plug it in so pi over 6 15 centimeters is the same as 0.15 meters so plug this into our handy calculator 0.15 cubed times pi and divide by 6 you're going to get v equals 0 0.0017671 we'll just go that far why not um so the units here are going to be volume, which is meters cubed. Um, yeah, so now we have V. If we multiply this by D, it'll give us the mass, right? So we're just moving this to this side. So uh, I'll just write it out, M equals DV. So it's going to be equal to the density, which is given to us right here. So 2,700. And then multiply that by this value, 0 0.001. Let me zoom out a bit. 17671. Let's see what that is. So M equals 4.77129. So we'll just say 4.771. The units are kilograms, since this was in kilograms per meter cubed. And then you just multiply it by meter cubed. 
Uh, awesome. So now we have the mass. Uh, let's go back up here just to plug it in. So we have our mass 4.771. We know the specific heat was given to us, which was 0.9. Uh, and then our T2 minus T1 is 200 minus 80. Now, something should be jumping at you right now, um, unless you know, but uh, notice that our temperature is in Celsius while I used uh, our specific heat in terms of Kelvin. But something you should know is that if you're subtracting two values or finding the difference in two Celsius values versus two Kelvin values, it doesn't actually change since all you're doing is adding or subtracting 273, right? Because if I want to convert from uh, Celsius to Kelvin, all I'm doing is adding, right? I'm just going to add the value of 273 um, in order to do that. So uh, if you just add it to both terms and then you subtract it, it's, it's not going to make a difference. So that's just something to keep in mind. So really, you can write this as C or K. It, it won't make a difference. But yeah, so plugging this in, or I'm actually not sure. I don't think this will make a difference, but I do... Just know that if you change, this can be written as in terms of K, so it won't actually make a difference. But yeah, so plugging this in, 4.771 times 0 0.9 times 120. So it's going to be equal to 515.27. So about 515, um, keep in mind our units are going to be kilojoules since we had kilojoules here. So... E equals 515 kilojoules. So, yeah, that's going to go ahead and be your answer. And, yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.